Hey, my name is Ralph with Flex Film. In this video, we're going to film the back window in this Toyota van, and we're going to show you how we use tools in our intermediate toolkit, which combines our basic toolkit with the intermediate toolkit, to show you how we can tent windows that have moderate curves, where we use heat guns that are accessible. That means we don't have to have any specialty tools to get behind brake lights and hard to reach places. We can use our intermediate toolkit to do windows like this. What we're going to do first is we're going to take a bar of soap. I'm using ivory. You can use Irish spring or any soap that doesn't have oil in it to do this step. I want to also point out that I've already pre-cleaned the glass. I use window cleaner and a microfiber towel. I even use a white scrubby. Uh, don't need to do a video to show you how to clean glass, but however you clean the glass, get it clean, dry it off, and you're ready for this step. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my ivory soap, and I'm just going to point it, push it, point it, hold it right here. I'm going to lightly just move it back and forth. See, right now, it's almost like a powdery substance on the glass. We're going to use this to help us heat mold our back window. I'm going to do this as a real quick step. You just kind of get it on everything, look light. I'm already halfway done. And then I'm going to come around. I'm going to repeat the same steps, just do the other half. This only should take about 30 seconds to a minute. If you're spending more time than that, something's not right. Okay, see now we're ready for the next step, which is introducing the window film for the heat molding process. Okay, here's where it gets exciting. I've taken our, our pre-cut tent pattern out of the tube, I've taken the tape off of it, and it's gonna be rolled up like this. What you wanna do is you wanna gently unroll it. Also, when you get it out to about this far, you wanna determine which side the release liner is on. This is a very important step. The release liner will be hanging off the edge uh, longer than the actual film itself. You can kind of pick at it and see where the glue and how it's sticking. So the release liner in this situation is facing towards, towards me. This is usually the way they're rolled with the release liners facing outward, nine times out of 10. So we're gonna gently unroll the film. We don't wanna crease it. And we wanna position the pattern on the glass. We wanna try to get the pattern on the glass as close as possible. But if you don't get it perfect, it's okay. We're just trying to heat mold and we wanna get it just within a few inches or an inch of being perfect, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I'll explain why in a second. So I'm gonna unroll this film. Okay, I'm gonna hold it, two corners. And then I'm gonna gently place it on the side. I might have my back towards you, but now I wanna point something out. I've got a windshield wiper, which is an obstacle. And that, that's okay, we, we don't have to go all the way down. We're not bulk installing this, we're not hand cutting this. Our pattern's already taken care of for us. So I might just go just a little above it so it doesn't encroach. I like the way that is. I'll, I'll explain this in a second. But I've, in the intermediate kit, we've provided a tool called the um, Smart Card. And I wanna, I wanna anchor the film. And I can anchor the film with the soap. It's, it's gonna help me help the film grab. And so I know I've got it. I'm just looking at this. I've got it pretty close. It's not exact. I mean, I wouldn't want to install it like, and depend on this, but I'm just I'm heat molding it. So what I want to do is I want to make a, a horizontal, I want to anchor my film horizontally. I'm going to divide the fingers or the slack from top to bottom, and I want to um, try to make them as equal as possible. Some windows will curve more at the top and less at the bottom. We would anchor it a little higher in that case. Because we want to try to, whatever, wherever we got to put our anchors, where, wherever we want to try to uh, balance our fingers out. We don't want fingers to get too big on one side and small on the other. We want to keep them consistent. And this is how we've done it on this window. I'll do the same step over here. I'm just going to sort of pull the film. How I'm going to squeegee, I don't want to go over anything and crease it. Boom. Okay, and then I want to go down the side a little bit. I want to make sure all my fingers, fingers are in a vertical position. You know, try, to, try to get it even. It's stuck. It's ready for heat molding. This step is simple. You don't have to get it perfect. You can go above obstacles like this. You're going to be okay. You don't have to go below them. Or, or if you want to, you can put a, a tennis ball here or, 
or something to, to hold it up. But again, for me, it's not necessary on this step. Okay, in this step, we're gonna use this heat gun and our smart card, and we're gonna heat mold this back window. Now, this is a, a step you may wanna pay attention to because if you're not a professional, you may wanna leave this in the hands of a, a professional. <laughs> if you want to try this yourself, watch this video and you may wanna give it a shot. Some people, uh, a lot of people do real well at this if they follow these steps. Now this heat gun may or may not be the one that came in our intermediate kit, but it's very similar to it. I just wanted to use a, a variety of heat guns because some, some of you guys may have your own or um, you may run into different ones. But this one has a, a heat setting on the back. I recommend on a gun like this, you put on the highest setting. If you got a gun like what comes in our, our intermediate kit, that's got level uh, one and two, I'd put it on level two. Um, it, it's gonna get to about 900, 1000 degrees. Or if you have one that you can set the temperature, don't go over 1000 degrees. Just keep it between 900 and 1000 and I think you'll be fine. But I'm gonna turn it on and let it kind of warm up a second. I've got it on uh, the highest it'll go, which will give me right around 1000 or right under 1000 degrees. And then we're gonna begin the heat molding process. Um, we've already anchored everything down. We got our soap, heat guns heating up. This is just a slow go process where you just heat a little bit at a time. I've got other videos that go into more detail about heat molding, but I'm just showing you how we're gonna do a pattern. I just take my time and I heat a little bit, push a little bit. This is not, again, this is not a video about how to heat mold. This is just a video to show you the steps necessary to install a pattern on a, on a, on a back glass that's an accessible back glass to show you simply how, how, how to do it and what steps are required to do it. It's pretty cool because the batter's already cut out for me. My job is just to get it molded to the glass. That's what I'm doing here. I'm actually molding it to the glass. All right, I've done the top. I'm gonna do the bottom real quick and then we're gonna speed the video up and then we're gonna show you what the next step is. Take a little bit of time. Don't get too ahead of yourself. This is our, um, our film, all our films shrink really, really nice. Shouldn't have any problems. I get in the zone. Okay, now we've done the heat molding. This piece of film is not exactly perfect on the back of the glass, but that's okay. All we were wanting to do is conform it to the shape of the glass, and we've successfully done that. The next step, we're gonna open the hatch, and we're gonna do some cleaning steps and preparation steps to get ready to install this film. Right now, we're using our car as our peel board, and we're gonna actually peel the liner and spray the film, uh, the glue on the film, uh, like we're using a peel board at our own shop. That's kind of cool. So next step, we're gonna, gonna get towards installing the film. Okay, in this step, you're gonna use three items. You're gonna use your pre-mixed pre-tac for cleaning. It's got a lot of alcohol in it. You're gonna use your uh, white scrubby. Mine's kind of worn out. And a microfiber towel. Now, if you really wanna up your game a little bit, you can utilize the triple lock steel wool. That would actually be a little bit uh, more abrasive. Uh, it wouldn't scratch uh, to clean the back window. But they're not necessary on everything. So we're gonna spray the pre-tac. Now we've filled up the pre-tac about a third of the way because it's concentrated and the rest of the way with, uh, with water. The still water is what we recommend, but if you got some good tap water, we can certainly do well with that as well. Okay, now I'm gonna, I've got a little elbow situation going on, so I gotta be careful with it. <laughs> but just uh, thoroughly, thoroughly uh, clean the back glass. You know, make sure you put a little bit of elbow grease in it. And I'm, um, you know, don't, don't get, get the edges too. You know, that, that's a, the alcohol really does wonders to prep that. 
and we are in a working shop. There's a lot of noises in the background. Uh, I'm also going to inspect. I see where an old sticker has once been. Uh, still, we'll get this off even quicker, but this white scrubby is doing just, just good. Sometimes you can just take your hand and rub it. If there's any problems, stickers, you can feel it. We're good. After this step, I'm going to take my microfiber. I just want to dry it off. This is a really big step that a lot of people won't do. They want to use their slip solutions, sort of like their cleaning solutions, and, and they really see window films peeling off glass and making makes it a little more difficult to install. Sometimes it even contributes to how long it's going to last on the car in some instances. So, all right, that is the cleaning phase. In this step, we're going to quickly mix up our slip solution. I'm going to take my Spray Master. It's a 32 ounce bottle. I'm going to fill it all the way up to about there where the 32 ounce mark is. And then I'm going to take my tent tack and I'm going to actually Fill up a cap and I'm going to pour it in there. Now, if you like a light mixture, this will be good for you. I like a little heavy mixture. I'm in the south. It's a little hot. Uh, if it's above 72 degrees, I might just do that much. <laughs> Maybe just go ahead and do the rest of it. Who cares? It's going to do good. Just experiment. You'll, you'll get the feel of it. It has a lot to do with what film you're using and uh, your preferences and your climate. Uh, you can put two capfuls in there or one. You can even put a little bit more, but try not to put too much more than that. If you put too much slip solution, sometimes it can contribute, you know, to making the film peel off the glass and you got to do more work to get, get it to stick on. But anyway, this is the next step. And now we're going to show you what the next step is to, uh, on the glass. Step. Okay, in this step, we brought our spray master over to the glass we've already cleaned on the inside. And we're going to lightly mist the whole glass like this. And then uh, we're going to keep our microfiber close by and I'm going to use my, my black turbo and then we're going to, we're going to squeeze you this. Now I've got a drop cloth below me that comes in the advanced kit, but you can use your own or sheet or you can just put a cloth like this underneath it to catch the moisture. But we're going to do smooth strokes like we're mowing the grass all the way down, hold the blade at about a, 45 degree angle. Now you can also, you can also push the blade at a 45 degree angle if that's the way you prefer. You'll get good at this if you do it enough and you can do both ways, but just make sure you're getting clean strokes. You're not leaving streaks. All we're trying to do is get any contaminant that could contribute to a, a bubble under our film. And uh, now we're gonna just dry the perimeter if our film touches that and we've kind of cleaned it like this, we get a get out of jail free card. We don't have to worry about any trash getting in our film. Now that step is ready. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to spray the inside of the glass. I'm going to do it now because it's a quick step. I'm going to, I don't, you don't need a lot of water. Just thoroughly spray it. Okay. I'm going to close the hatch and then I'm going to go ahead and close it now. Let's, uh, Close it now, then, then we're going to readjust our cameras and then we'll show you what I'm going to do. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly mist the film. The reason I do this is to prevent any sta static electricity from pulling any contamination under the film and it just kind of keeps the dust down. Okay, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to spray the glue or the adhesive underneath the release liner. This is a protective release liner. It's cut larger than the film. We're going to carefully pull it back. Notice I'm not pulling it like this. I'm pulling it like I'm almost dragging it across itself so that it will not pull the film up and it stick to itself or, you know, and up here is a little tricky area. I can barely touch the edge because that's going to be hidden. I'm going to pull it to about halfway or a little past halfway, maybe an inch or two. Now that's the glue. We don't want to get anything on that. We want to carefully spray it. Our spray master. Now we want to pick up the release liner. We want to carefully lay it back down on there. We want to seal it so no dirt, dust, debris, or anything. And we want to repeat the other side. We don't want anything to get in that. We're going to quickly, excuse me, we're going to quickly separate the liner again from the, from the glue, pull it back to basically where we were. Do the same step. 
Notice how I don't spray water up in there and have it fall down, because I don't bring trash down with it if we've got any contamination up there. I'm gonna quickly put it on here. So now, it doesn't, it, it, wherever you wanna start rolling it, I'm gonna start rolling it. I'm gonna put my back to you for a second. Let's walk around. I'm gonna start rolling it. Wherever you start rolling it, you gotta think ahead. Wherever you end up is where you're gonna start unrolling it. So this is called the reverse roll or California roll technique. It's probably a good method. You could, you could just snatch this film up. It, you know, they, they call it the Frankenstein or you know, just the bulk install or whatever you wanna call it. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do it the easy way. The older you get, the more you wanna work smarter not harder, and you don't want to have any contamination. So we're gonna leave our soap on there for a minute. We're gonna, we're gonna raise the, the hatch. Probably do it this way, the best. Um, I probably don't need any, any more slip solution, but just because we've been talking a lot, I probably slowed down a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna spray it again. Now, I'm gonna separate the release liner. I don't know if you can see this. I wanna get a good one. I'm gonna separate the release liner. There's two ways to do it. You can separate it and hold on to it and pull it by the release liner, or you can let the release liner stick to it, which I'm gonna do here. And then you can unroll it. And as you're unrolling it, 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 it the release liner sticks to the back. It's just a, Kind of a convenient way to, let's say, handle the film if you don't want to, you know, because I'm working against gravity right now. I'm underneath it, and I just don't want it to fall off, hit anything. So it's kind of a cool method for me. I want to kind of line my film up, kind of get most of it sticking to the glass. Then I might try to work the, the liner off. This, this liner's just kind of sticking on the back. I'll be real careful. I'm gonna discard the liner to the side. And I'm gonna kind of carefully place the film on here. It's, there's 101 different ways to do this, but you just kind of kind of ease it on here. Don't crease it. Don't get in a hurry. You don't want to do this in the direct sunlight because the sunlight right now would be drying up our slip solution, which would cause our film to stick, and and we're gonna have to fight it and get creases. So if you're out of the sun, you're you're ahead of the game. So that just, what you wanna do is use your hands. Don't use squeegees or tools. You just wanna spread this out. Now we're looking for light gaps. All we wanna do is avoid all the light gaps. It's easy to see the darker the film. Um, this happens to be a 5%. This band is gonna be converted, I believe, to a, to like a camper. Okay, I can't get the film behind that piece of plastic, but um, you take your smart card or something real thin or your platinum easy reach, kind of get back behind there and just, just let, let's gently pry it open. Okay, what you wanna do is you wanna flatten everything out, really, you know, make sure everything's flat, no light gaps. And then, I like to spray the film, um, just kinda missed it. I wanna, I wanna add lubrication to it, cause now I'm getting ready to squeegee it. You can squeegee with your black turbo, or let me grab this, or your Blue Max. I'm gonna use these in conjunction with each other. I like to lay the film down first. I like to start here in the middle, and I wanna go horizontal like I did when I shrunk it. Kinda wanna smooth it out the same way I shrunk it. And I wanna go down, and then I wanna go up, kinda up to the side. I don't wanna pull water up in there and have it just come back down and bring its trash with it. So now I got, to, I got four quads to, to work with. I almost want to push all my water to the side and down. I, I, don't, I just want to minimize how much water goes everywhere. Same over here, I just, there's no real rule here. Whatever you're comfortable with, we just want to make sure we manage water the best way possible. Don't make a mess. We don't want it going back underneath the film. I don't care which one you do first or last. Just see, I, I think it's more critical on the top to push water to the side. We don't want it to go up and then down. We want it to go out to the side and down. 
so it doesn't bring any contamination with it back under the film. And then we do the last quadrant the same way. Now we're just laying it down. Don't worry about doing it too hard or missing a spot. We just want to get the water in the right place and squeeze it out. Okay. Now, this is a quick step. I want to use, I want to lightly miss this again. This is a step I think is very important. It helps it dry quicker, probably helps it last longer. We want to put a lot of pressure on this and we want to push really hard. We want to get just about all the water left out. It's a quick step. This is what you can do with your, your Blue Max squeegee or any squeegee for that matter <laughs> with a handle on it. Um, this, this is the secret to making these tent jobs look really good is the, is the proper squeegee and you know, after you can get it on there without getting trash in it. <laughs> anyway, don't, don't worry about all the little details. Just, we're just trying to get the water out to make it look clean. Okay. This is just to just, just go through the motions, get it all out. You're gonna do really good with the squeegee if you get it all out and it's gonna look good and clean. Okay. I like to clean my mess up a little bit. I wanna draw off the edges. I wanna um, go all the way around. Okay, listen, I don't wanna make everything sound like I'm, I'm perfect and everything's Coke and ice cream and candy. It's not, it's not uncommon that around the edges, you're gonna have places that you, you have to contend with. I wanna show you a couple of steps to get those little places out and to get this, these edges laying down really smoothly and to keep the uh, places of uh, the edges and, uh, from, from rolling off the glass in these next few steps. Stay tuned. Okay, I've just closed the hatch. I wanna keep this video as real as possible. There are places that have it laid down like I want on the edges, but it's a little hard for us to see them. I've still got the soap on here. So right here, I'm gonna quickly wash this soap off. So I want you guys to see what's going on. I don't want you to panic. You know, when you see imperfections in a tent job, you know, after you've gotten this far, because this is, this is where some of these um, last little steps here will make or break this tent job and make it look good. Let's point out some of these things real quick. Can you get a close up on that? We got a, we got a couple of fingers here. We got one here. We got one here. Now we got some up here. You can't see them uh, probably with the camera angle. These are from moisture. Okay. See, it's not laying down. It's not wanting to cooperate with us at all there. We can go around the perimeter and see some of the other ones uh, real quick. There's a couple there and there's a really big one there. It was due to the way I shrunk it, but I got good news. We're going to show you how to get rid of them hundred percent. So let's open it back up. First thing you want to do, step one, you want to get your smart card out. You want to get some paper towels in the kit, you should have some blue shop tiles. It doesn't matter if these have lint on them or not. All we're trying to do is trying to get rid of moisture. Moisture's our friend, but now it's our enemy. We, we want to get it around from the edges because it's causing these little bleeder fingers to come in and it's not making it look very good. So I want to put the napkin around the smart card. I want to do with a step called bumping the edges. By bumping the edges, we're getting the moisture out from around the perimeter of this window. That's what we're doing because the moisture is creating a lot of this havoc that we need to go away. So if we get rid of that moisture, which we are, see I'm soaking it up, we can start to see things laying down a lot smoother already. So I can see a lot of that moisture right here. We use a lot of water slip solution to put this on and a lot of it's simply trying to find its way back in the cracks. That's what it's doing. Okay, there's two ways to contend. I don't use the smart card on the inside of the glass. This card right here, it will scratch tent. Do not do it. You can put a napkin around it, but don't use it by itself or you're gonna see scratches, okay? That's why we have this card. This card's a softer plastic. It's not gonna equal any scratches. I need my heat gun. Oh, let me go get my heat gun in the next thing. <laughs> The first thing we're gonna do is only on the top and the bottom, not on the sides. We don't do this step on the sides. Remember that. 
uh, we can shrink little fingers from the inside really quickly. I don't know if you want to get a close up of this. Here's a finger right here. There's a couple here. There's one here, one here, one here. We can, now, now you don't want to burn anything. This is a quick step. You want to put the gun there, let the fingers shrink, uh, squiggle up, and then you can push them out. Just systematically, one at a time. One at a time. Let's go down the line. You can, you know, one at a time. One at a time. You see how, see how they squiggle up? Squiggle up. They're a little stubborn. That's okay. We'll go to the outside and finish it off. You, you just want to keep some heat on it. See, what we're trying to do is get the, get the glue back sticky again by drying the water out. We'll have to do some outside work. Okay, that's, that's pretty quick. I mean, it's a quick step. Here's one on the side. Now, if you want to do one on the side, do not get closer than six inches. See this one right here? I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay right here. I'm gonna just sort of push. I'm gonna stay here and push. I just wanna sort of dry it out in there. I'll get that glue back sticky again. And all you gotta do is just push on it. Now this car's not scratching anything. It won't scratch anything. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at the top. Oh, there's a good one, Aaron. Uh, get the see, see that really it's not laying down it's like literally peeling off the glass okay i want just you know, leave the camera there i'm gonna put a little heat on it i'm gonna push put a little heat on it push it's just real easy sometimes these this all, the, all this these tents the tent <laughs> needs a little help okay let's go on around the rest of the edge and we'll, we'll probably be done here's one more over here it's a real quick step Almost kind of fun to do. It kind of seals the edges down. Now, that's all the heat gun work I'm going to do. Um, one of the last steps I can do is I can take my microfiber. I can take my pre-tack. Now, it's also is a, is a glass cleaner. That's what I like about it. Save some steps here. You don't spray much on there at all. I can use my microfibers. My microfiber is a little wet. I might just use my paper towel. Doesn't matter at this point. I just want to make it look pretty. That's all I'm trying to do. Just gonna just go over it real quick. It doesn't streak. The pre-tack is really good glass cleaner. Okay. Well, I see one more little spot. <laughs> all I got. If you see an extra spot, just uh, you probably just got to push on it. That's it. That's all it did. It is out. Take my microfiber again, dry off the edges, keep your job clean. All right. And pick up your tools. I'm going to close the hatch and we're going to take a look at the final product. Okay, I appreciate you watching this video. Uh, you can get professional results if you don't skip steps and do just what I did. I don't believe I've left out anything, I, I kept it real. Uh, you can get the results that look like this. We just need to let this window dry a little bit. And after it dries, we could probably go around the perimeter of this thing to make it actually just lay in there perfect. Um, there's a lot of steps here, but you know you have all the tools to do them. And you know you saw how it works. Uh, just a little practice makes perfect. But uh, thank you for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, you know always give us your feedback. We'd like to hear from you. Thank you.